Let's go on to the topic of same-sex marriage, because obviously you can't talk about marriage without talking about what's hot in the press right now on same-sex marriage. You know, sometimes when you go out soul winning, people will ask you, because you know, they know you're a Christian, they'll, they'll ask you, like, what's your position on same-sex marriage? And they, and they ask you that as though you're, you know, sometimes I wonder why they're even asking that, because I mean, of course my position against same-sex marriage is that it's wrong, that it's a sin. You know, I'm against same-sex marriage because I'm against homosexuality. So it's just funny that so many people out soul winning ask you this question, you know, what's your, your, your view on, on same-sex marriage? And maybe it's just sad because so many Christians have compromised in this area that they're so used to Christians saying like, oh, you know, well, it's not ideal, you know, whatever. But, you know, we just need to love them and we just need, you know, that's just what they're doing and there's nothing really wrong with it. We just don't want to call it marriage. Um, you know, maybe they're so used to hearing that sort of response that they're shocked when somebody comes to their door and actually believes the Bible and actually believes what the Bible says about homosexuality. Um, and, you know, homosexuality, according to the Bible, is a sin. And it's not just in the Old Testament, because somebody might say, oh, you know, in the Old Testament, oh, that's the Old Testament, we don't follow the Old Testament. But it is in the New Testament as well. Um, let's just go to Romans 1. And just see it here. It says here in verse 24, Wherefore God, this is Romans 1. So this is the New Testament. This is the New Covenant. You can't even say, well, it's in the Gospels. It's still in the Old Covenant. This is, this is the, the letters from Paul. You can't even get, you can't get more New Covenant than Paul, right? Um, so Romans 1, 24 says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So remember we talked about last week that, you know, fornication, you know, the, the sexual act is unclean. It's just that in marriage, God does not consider it unclean because the marriage bed is undefiled. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature so we see here that god describes it as vile affections he describes it as unnatural it's against nature and it is unnatural i mean <laughs> you don't have to be a rocket scientist to, re to realize that homosexuality is unnatural i mean god you know they say that god created adam and eve he didn't create adam and steve you know you, there's a reason why females and males exist in the world it's to bring forth children and that is natural and you know, it's funny when people will make the, the argument and say, well, with the, you see homosexual tendencies in animals, but I'm not trying to pattern my life after an animal. You know, monkey, we, we went to the zoo and a monkey was there and he, and he did a poo and then he ate his own poo and then everyone was laughing because it was so disgusting. I mean, you're going to pattern yourself after an animal. Are you going to eat your own poo? I mean, this is the sort of, uh, like, they're not thinking through their logic. This is why you never use animals as a reason for why you do things. You say animals don't cover their breasts when they, when they breastfeed. Well, that's because they're an animal, right? They don't have any sense of modesty. They don't have any sense of, you know, uh, covering yourself in shame. Um, we don't pattern ourselves after animals. Animals is not a good reason for why you do things because animals do things that are abominable. Animals do things that are, and that's why they commit homosexuality because it's not natural because animals are animals and we're not animals. Um, so it's, it's not natural. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, see the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error. See, the Bible says it's an error that they're doing, it's wrong, which was meat. Uh, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So according to the Bible, homosexuality is a sin. So when, when, when you're asked the question, you know, are you against homosexuality? Uh, sorry, are you against same-sex marriage? I mean, that's, that's a secondary issue. That's not even the issue at hand. The issue at hand is, is homosexuality even right to do? And according to the Bible, it's wrong. And, you know, ultimately, the Bible is the reason why anything is wrong. You know, like if, if we were to grill down to the heart of the issue, why is anything a sin? It's a sin because the Bible says it's a sin. And that's why the most, in question, the most important question to debate these days is the source of truth. 
right? Because if the Bible, that's the, the most important question really when it comes to any topic, any social issue, any issue of morality is, is the Bible the word of God? And that's why I talk to you guys about these, these issues where, where people try and point out inconsistencies in the Bible because I'm showing you that the Bible is defensible if you have the right positions. You can stand on the Bible and you can defend it and believe that it's the word of God because that's the most important question because if the Bible has errors and it's inconsistent, then it's not the word of God and then how are you going to prove that homosexuality is wrong? Because that's the reason why it's wrong because the Bible says it's wrong and we believe the Bible is the word of God. So if it is, then if the Bible is the word of God, then what it preaches is the truth and man's opinions are irrelevant. Man's opinions don't change what is true. <laughs> but I think God gave us a mind. You know, I, 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 love it, I love it when somebody brought this to my attention one day. I can't remember when I listened to a sermon, but, you know, because, you know, a lot of people, they don't understand things in the Bible and they just think, oh, well, that's just, you know, that's just God. We, just, we don't have to understand it. We just take it by faith and we don't have to think it through. But remember, the Bible says the first commandment is to love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. So we don't only love God with all our heart, we don't ser just serve Him with all our might, we also worship Him and love Him with our mind. So God expects us to think about these things. He expects us to think about, He gave us a mind, He gave us, He made us rational beings to think about these things and reason them through so that we can understand more about God. You don't want to just you know, take this cop out and just think, oh, I don't understand it, but I'm just going to think of it by faith. Because that's the reason why Christians get the, uh, the, the um, reputation of just being blind followers of a faith and not thinking about it. And unfortunately, a lot of people are like that. So you know, we can reason through it because God gave us a brain to think and um, serve him with. And he's a God of justice and rationality. So the reason why in the Bible that, you know, homosexuality is a sin is because it is a form of fornication. Because you cannot marry the same gender, you are always going to be fornicating. Because marriage, like we said in the last sermon, is between one man and one woman. It, it, and it's, it's, it's linked to the biological fact that a man has a male see, reproductive organ and a woman has the woman reproductive organ. And people nowadays are trying to split I don't know what they call it. Like they're trying to split the gender from your, your sex, I think. So they'll say like, you know, yes, your sex is male, but your gender is what society has brought you up as. And they're trying to detach the fact that you're a man because of your sexual reproductive organs. Um, and it's just how you're raised. And now you've got this transgender movement with Caitlyn Jenner and all this, this weird stuff. But see, look what happens when you get away from the Bible. When you get away from an absolute standard of morality, then anything goes. Because if there is no absolute standard of morality, then what is right and wrong? Because if we don't believe the Bible is the word of God and we stand on it, what right do we have to tell somebody else that they're wrong? Morality has to come from an absolute standard. It has to come from God. Otherwise, it can't be imposed on anybody else. So it's a form of fornication. And you know, same-sex you know, even, you know, we should put in quotation same-sex marriage because it's not really marriage. It's an oxymoron because people of the same sex can't marry biologically and, and even have children. So when we think about the topic of same-sex marriage, especially it's a hot topic in the political realm right now, you know, the, pe people are, are all up in arms about what to call it. You know, like, oh, you know, how can they call this marriage? The issue with same-sex marriage is not the marriage part. The issue with same-sex marriage is the same-sex part. It doesn't matter what you call it. The, the, the issue is that the, the same sex is coming together. Whether you call it marriage or not is, um, is, is not really the issue. So they can try and redefine the word, but um, it won't change the biological facts. Because the biblical debate, really, if you... If you if, if we're talking about what the Bible says about homosexuality, the, the debate is not really about whether or not they should marry. The debate is whether or not homosexuality and types of fornication should even be allowed to exist in a society. And this is why God prescribes the death penalty for certain things. And I'll preach on this on another time and go into it in more depth. But the death penalty is there is to cleanse a society from certain sins. And that's why the Bible says repeatedly, when it says, thou shalt sh they shall surely be put to death, it says, so shalt thou put evil away from among you. 
That's why there are certain penalties in the Bible that are given the death penalty because they destroy society and fornication is one of them. So the question really is, you know, should homosexuality be a capital crime? I mean, according to the Bible, it is. It says that if a man lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So the Bible says that um, because God does not want uh, homosexuality to be in a society. Now, am I saying that we take the law into our own hands? No. So we don't go out and then just kill homosexuals because it's something the government is meant to do and God appointed government in the Old Testament to, uh, to do that. So, you know, it's not just going out and just killing them. It's, it's bringing them before a court, you know, trying them before two or three witnesses, finding them guilty and then executing them. Um, but it's not only homosexuality because people will say, well, you know, are you only against homosexuals? No, because in the Bible, it's not only, it's not only homosexuality that is given the death sentence. It's also adultery, right? It's also fornicating with a woman that is betrothed. It's also, you know, uh, children that don't obey their parents or children that smite or curse their parents. So the whole idea of God instituting a death penalty is to discourage people from doing these things and to keep a society strong and stable and pure. Because think about it, God is against all fornication. Because God, he didn't just, just, he didn't just say, kill, uh, execute them for sleeping with the same gender. He said, execute them if they sleep with an animal. Execute them if they commit adultery. Um, and even with fornication, remember we talked about it, if you fornicate, you're forced to marry. And then if you marry and you keep on fornicating, now you're committing adultery. So God, you can see across the board, is trying to keep a society pure and stable because it is family is the building block of society. And if the family degrades, society degrades, and this is why we're in the situation we are in today where there is rampant fornication, there, there is the, all the stuff that you're seeing out there, it's because the family is not being defended. So somebody might say, you know, in Kenya, there was a, there was a clip I posted on the, on the church Facebook page. They actually have a, a jail sentence for homosexuals. So you might say, well, why don't we put them in jail? Why don't, why, you know, why don't we put people that commit these forn certain types of fornication, instead of executing them, why don't we put them in jail? Well, the reason why we don't put people in jail is because jails cost money. Jails are not free. Do you know what I mean? This is why God instituted the death sentence for murderers and rapists because if, think about this, you know, I was talking to somebody at work and I was saying, you know, we were talking about the death sentence and whether or not the death sentence should apply. And he said, oh, you know, I never, I never think uh, the death sentence should apply. But I, but I said to him, well, so at least, do you think that they at least should be put in jail? Because, I mean, they should be punished, right? You can't, can't just not punish them. And he said, well, yeah, I guess that would be preferable. So I said to him, well, what if, because he's got a son, I said, well, what if somebody raped and murdered your son? Are you happy to pay for them to still be alive? Because you're, you're the one paying the taxes. You're paying for them to, to exist in jail because the jails are not free. Jails need to be paid for somebody. So I don't think it's just if somebody has committed an abominable crime that, is, that warrants the death sentence according to God, but yet now you're going to force the offended party to pay for them to, to, to live in jail and to feed them and to clothe them and, and with our justice system now to one day get out and then do it again um, there's a reason why god has the death sentence so people might say you know why, why are you against all these people that do all these things they're not doing anything to you yeah they're not doing anything maybe to me directly but what they are doing is destroying society and that does affect us because we live we're, we're not on an island you know we live in a world with other people and other people do affect what we do and god puts certain limits on certain sins that's why some sins in the bible don't have a judicial punishment you know we shouldn't be punishing like using drugs you now using is, is drugs a sin yes but should it be illegal no because it, god doesn't prescribe a judicial punishment if somebody wants to destroy themselves with drugs then you know that's not something that god warrants with any sort of punishment but it's not something we should be doing because sin always has consequences but it doesn't necessarily have to be illegal and the other thing as well is you know it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that if two people cannot have children they they're not reproducing 
right? They're not, they're not getting more people in their camp by having children. They're getting more people in their camp because they're recruiting. And this is why God wants to stamp out you know, certain sins from a society because they do infect other people. Because when you're fornicating, you're fornicating with other people. See, you, you have to recruit somebody. And generally, you know, this is just a generalization, but think about it. When, generally, when I speak to men that fornicate, they want to go after the virgins, don't they? They're not so interested in, in a woman that's already fornicated so many times. There seems to be some sort of you know, ungodly trophy associated with being able to sleep with a virgin and make her lose her virginity. So this is why fornication and these things should not be in society because they do. They come after the precious life, as the Bible talks about. And this is what homosexuals do. This is what fornicators do. And this is what adulterers do. They destroy families and they destroy society, uh, which is the bedrock of uh, a stable civilization.